Avogadro's law is a walk in the park, and that leads us to a big formula that we can use to calculate virtually anything that we need to for gases. And here's Avogadro's law. Think about it this way. If you take volume, and I say, here you got a volume of gas in this balloon or whatever this container is, right? And I go, huzzah! And I compress it. You'd say, hey, you increase the pressure. I say, no, the pressure stays the same. You say, ha, ha, ha. Then you decrease the temperature in order to keep that pressure the same. I say, you know what? The temperature stays constant too. You're saying, well, that's not possible unless there's a hole in the bag and the molecules came out when you went, ha, Yep, that's exactly right. So here's the thing. When you have a volume at, well, let's put it this way, at constant temperature and pressure, the volume of a gas is directly proportional to the number of moles you have. So, what makes sense here is that V over N, directly proportional to each other, equals another constant, K, K double prime, for instance. Okay, and that means then that V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2, and that's Avogadro's formula for Avogadro's law. And what's the relationship between volume and number of moles of gas that you have at constant temperature and pressure? Well, as the volume goes up, the number of moles goes up. And that can actually start at the origin because if you have no moles, you have no volume. So there you go. Hey, that's nice. All right. Now, that one, not too many people ask it. It's pretty, it's pretty easy to be able to, to uh, solve questions here. So you won't get asked too many of those. But here's the thing. Now you can take those three ideas, Boyle's Law, Charles Law, Avogadro's Law, and combine all of this into one formula. PV equals K, Boyle's Law. V over T equals K prime. That would be Charles Law. V over N equals K, say, double prime. That's Avogadro's Law. Or, hey, if I want to just solve for V, that equals K over P. And if I want to solve for just V here, that's KT. And if I wanted to solve just for V here, I'd multiply both sides by N, and I'd get this. And if you take all of this, and you want to write one formula, V, that's a V, <laughs> is going to equal... Hey, there's K, K double prime, K triple prime. What are you going to call that? And call it R, because three Ks put together is R. Okay, and then you've got temperature and number of moles in the numerator, but you've got pressure in the denominator. Or, ladies and gentlemen, multiply both sides by P, and you get PV equals NRT. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to Pvnert. And Pvnert is the ideal gas law formula. And uh, by the way, we, we say that it's ideal gas because we treat, basically Avogadro found out that you could treat all gases pretty much the same. And that if you had one mole of one gas and one mole of another gas, you'd actually have the same number of particles of that gas. So therefore, we treat them, and it's not, it's not totally true that, that, that um, one mole of one gas completely occupies the identical volume of another, but it's close enough that we can treat them ideally. That's the idea. Ideally. So, PV equals NRT, that is the ideal gas law where R actually has a very important value. R equals, now if we're going to be doing questions with atmospheres, R equals 0 decimal 08206 liter atmospheres per Kelvin, that's Kelvin mole. Oh my, that is a funny looking unit. And, well, you have to have that in order for proper unit cancellation. And, if we were doing uh, pressures involving KPA, then this number, 0.08206 latmospheres per mole, would be turned actually into 8.314 kilopascal liters, kapals, per mole. We'll use both in subsequent calculations.